Chapter Tano Gifts The ship's crew never mentioned the storm, thinking it was a fracky storm that often happens with the devices the Abenians have in Plate to keep the earth from erupting into a ball of fire. It is no fever horse later, and the horse show is in open waters traveling along the outskirts of the Florida coast. The time stairs the ship left, passing the remnants of the case, which were where the red away be many hurricanes over the last century. From there, the horse show finds its way up the eastern coast. Its destination? The city of Crypto, New York. The former slaves and a boxy gun and Dung White patiently next to the twins as they can't believe what happened, keeping watch as ordered be lazy. A kutukananu our cans on the floor next to a very contented sister. She notices her wounds are her lead. Anu. Are you okay? A kunsimbel size they are fully, i ambuho. Uho are all of you? A kutukananu asks. She has forgotten about her friends and family for a moment. I am your sister, Akun Simbel. You went to visit the gods. I told they were going to take you from me. Tears flow down Akun Simbel's fate. No Akutukananu proclaims, there is but on a god. Like a book Sigun has said, and he has given us these powers to destroy our enemies and free ourselves from captivity. A Simbel is confused by what her sister says. What? On a god. A Kutukananu nods. On a god. He's her led us sister. Observe your wounds. You are also her led. Akun Simbel steps away and observes herself. She is her led. Akun Simbel rejoices, God be praised. There is no more pain. She quickly hugs her sister. Let's get you ladies clothed properly and leave these slave quarters. Il be al to happy to slaughter our enemies. Allah says with. Exuberance, and Everione agrees and cheers. Searching through out the ship, they discovered weapons on board the vessel and dung and a boxy gun backpacks. A boxy gun smiled as he tells the twins, I'm so grateful for about showing us the path. Then he turns to them and saying, I'll show you how to be warriors for about. Akela Malek, Keeper of the strolls of indigenous wisdom, side it best, black sons of Africa. Eu melanated princess of Sangrail. The royal blood is created from the dark energy of spate that forms the dark matter that fuels life. The liquid current you carry in your loins was meant to be. Deposited in the warm matrix vault of a woman of equally royal status. Royal Israel or Ligat of El or God. That Ligat is what you carry in CDO. The vault or warm bank is the only vault that can turn black liquid currents into solid black gold as present in the world as your true wealth. To the anger of many fallen angels, Elohim gave you the gift of immortality through the recreation of yourself indefinitely. What are you doing with that gift? How are you spending that wealth? With what bank of life? A boxigun held up his weapon as he continued we are to say in. Rome has spoken about the melanated people of the earth, the chosen people of Sabaoth. They have used, abused, manipulated, and molested our bodies and means to control us. No more. Attack. Oldone guided them through the vessel as they rushed to the entrance to the deck, and a guard stood there when he noted the men. A boxy gun and the former slaves rushed the ship with fury. A guard notices them and screams, the slaves are revolting. 
A boxigun quickly grabs Dung with both hands and spins him towards the guard as Dung transforms into a hammer. Teslaves are The guard's brain matter flees everywhere, and the body falls to the floor. Dung suddenly transforms again, forming a sword as a boxigun forces it rogue another nearby Anakata's heart. The sailor's body falls off the ship's bow into sharp infested waters. The sword quivers as a boxigun plucks the blood on the ground. It sharp shifts back to a humanoid blood covered Dung. Dung looks at the Karnage as he shouts, We are winning, Uhile out of breath. A boxigun says, We have only just begun. He looks to his left and says the sisters Akun Simbel and Akutukananu fighting together without mercy. Victimized and brutalized, neither have any pity for their enemies. Akun Simbel, being the most abused, has a founded hatred engraved into her bones. She lets loose an unfathomable stretch such as never been heard in living history, which sends a reverberation through the ocean. The waters are disturbed. Thunder rolls and lightning trackless. The sea began to swell, and a 60-foot tsunami arose quickly from it and smashed headlong onto the ship's starboard bow, washing away a who stood in its path. Dung immediately becomes a tigitly knitted rope lichenet and covers a boxigun wheeler latching onto a drill hook on the ship's hull. Heavy rain comes from this massive storm and pummels the horse shoe. The wind, rain, and dark clouds made it nearly impossible to say anything. Akutukananus backs in an ancient tongue wheeler looking toward the heavens with her arms outstretched. A boxigun yells and remains her, Anu. Don't forget we are on her, to. She takes head and treates a wind vortex around her alias. The gigantic wave. Smashes back into the ship. A loud tracking sound followed. After the wave destroys the left starboard bow, Leaving it in tatters, the time, so meho holds onto the rope tied to a broken mast. But he does not make it past Akutukananus Gaze. She stretches forth her left hand in the time's direction. A bolt of lightning strikes and kills the time on the spot thunder bombs and shakes the ship even while in open water. We let the twins practically drawn al tose who are foes. Allah incinerates ten anakatas with his new gift serap. Horrid screams followed soon after that. The smell of burning flesh hung in the air and filled the nostrils of Al. Who reminded. As they were rages on break, the time son watches as Akutukanan murders his father from afar. He hides behind a slightly open hatch for the rest of that evening. A boxigun and the former slaves revolted against their captors and took control of the ship. Deep inside the vessel's bowels, break hides in one of the slave quarters that had not been occupied. It stinks, dark, cold, and wet. Break is destined to remain there until the horse show reaches New York. He only comes up sporadically for food and air as the captive sail the ship east. The captain's first mate, a man named Gonzalez, was captured and bound to a mask, looking at a boxigun, yo black bastard, he will kill you. A boxigun grabbed the first mate by the neck, Birmingham. Kentucky Conf said, the first matter said, who had the fuck are you talking about, yo black bastard? A boxigun said, cool crook plan, with the caps, nigged readers is what I'm talking about. Who often have a people like you murdered, raped, robbed, and stolen from us because of your uncontrollable lust for land power and greed? William Tkoy, Nathaniel Piketty, Prince Jones, Timothy Thomas, 
and countless authors, and the stories of Birmingham, Kentucky, have a plagued me people throughout history. At Riving Tobato Town Siege Biwite Marauders Kaled Nig Triders. Rided the black part of the town, shooting and killing black landowners, while the black people lost a trace of farmland that they worked for decades for pennies to their executioners. Or Pierce Kitty, Missouri, Uhere at Osand with a people killed and burned down black owned houses within four days as the rest of the black population fled for their safety. They, too, lost farmland address and sold for pennies on a dollar. The stories go on and on, like Hickman, Kentucky, Holmes County, Mississippi, and Okoye, Florida, with the Okoye massacre. The first mate got irritated listening to a book sigun and shouted, Spare me the bullshit laisure and do what you what to do it has to be better than listening to you go on and on about so many nonsense. You was born to rule and you were born to serve. Play your part and deal with it. Alda became enraged at what the first mate said and plunged a stale rod into the man's mouth and him tired of your mouth and your bullshit. The first mate gags on his blood and dies in a struggling pain moments later. Oldone looked at a boxigun and was taken away by his words, little man, ho. Do you know so much about our people and culture? A book sigun replied, Uhere me and dung are from, we live in peace and harmony with anakatas, computants, and wakatilians, and hey call us mestizos because of this. Mi father, aunts, and uncles rule the land as peatekepers for sabaut. We learn our history together and are taugt uniti early. Oldone said so presidly, never heard of such a plate. Dung said, you probably have a. They used to call it no man's land. It is no known as about's land. It consists of Madinat Altanwir to Colonia and Huat. Laguna. The Busti Los, Kudad for Temok, the twin cities of Colonia Alvaro Obregn and Granjas El Venado, al along a great Higuay Kaled, Wanyenyekevu trial, named after a boxigun's father. Oldone and the rest could not believe what they heard about young a boxigun, but they knew on a thing this kid was far from a verage, and their new found gifts also confused money. Allah asked a boxigun do you. No can you tell me more of these old stories? A boxigun was happy as he talked, and the men gathered around him. I am not on to hate, and I don't hate anyone except those filled with evil, for there are many people of all nations that are God, just as there were those who are evil, but hatred because of a particular rate or creed has always done something to me soul. Speaking of which, I am reminded of Mr. Adam Trosuhite, our Catilians. He and his family lived in Marshall, Michigan. Four men from Kentucky came into town to seize him and his family under the fugitive slave law of Elfu Moja Namia Sabatisini Natatu to return them to Bondage. The men of Marshall were notified of the situation by the Aution Bell, which was simply a man that rode on horseback ringing a bell with important news or information. Early that morning, he rushed through the town, the slave catchers are after the trosuhites. Neighbors heard the signal and ran to his house. A group of over a hundred community men, both black and white, gathered at his home. They distracted the Kentuckian Suhile Adam, his wife, and their four children stopped be trying to Detroit and continued to Canada. Tese people didn't say color, they saw a man in need and were there to assist their neighbor. Love is colorblind to money, 
Likete parents of the African Roman Emperor Ruho influenced Britain in the first century. Lucius Septimius Severus was born into a family of great wealth in Leptis Magna, now Alcums in Libya. His mother was of Italian descent, and his father was from North Africa. He was the first emperor born into a regional family of non-Italian origin. His mother's ancestors came from Italy to North Africa. They belonged to the Gens Fulvia, originally called Fulvia, an Italian aristocratic family that had its origins in Tusculum. His father was a simple country boy with no political status. However, he had two cousins, Publius Septimius Severus and Gaius Septimius Severus, who served as consuls under Emperor Antoninus Pius. Many are ignorant of our accomplishments, like that of Estevanico, from Morocco, who crossed the North American continent for the first time with just a party of four. His expedition discovered Arizona and New Mexico. Estevanico's travels opened up the status southwest of Florida as far as the Pacific Ocean. A book Sigun located at the main and side, he will stop there for no because he want you to look this information up and read it for yourself like me father who said to say, don't believe any man, for every man is a liar, and only about spare the truth. Allah then said. How can we believe the authors of this box and a book Sigun said, God question. And walked away with a smile, saying, No, you're thinking. It's been three days since the horse show massacre, and the former slaves are rejoicing gratuitously. Oldone, however, has been standing on the ship's deck all three days, watching the sunrise and said, Weary and exhausted, but continues to stand and admire the sun setting and rising. Allah was baffled by this and wondered if Oldone was okay. Standing just twenty feet away, watching Oldone watching the sea and the sun. A book Sigun takes notice of Oldone and Allah standing at a mast. A book Sigun walks up behind Allah, Allah. A book Sigun calls out to him quietly. Allah looks over his shoulders likely to say a book Sigun. Oldone has been standing in the same position for the last three days. Fredo must feel strange. A book Sigun replies, you old to, my be, if you were held in chains all your life. Allah stands silently for over two minutes, it's a lot to take in for so many such as Oldone. He assume he is taking it on a day at a time. Like many of us are. A book Sigun agrees, indeed, Alda, from Bondage to Freedom so quickly. How old any man? Respond. The ship tracks and groans. From afar, the wind carries the celebration of the free slaves. Behind the two warriors, you can see on a large torch attached to a scone hanging off one of the remaining masts. The people dance and sing underneath it a book Sigun hears the festivities behind him and admonishes Alda to leave Oldone in Peate. Leave him alone, Alda. He will come around. A book Sigun walks away. Alda son follows. Later that night, a book Sigun checks on the twins. Both are in a room alone, meditating and praying. A book Sigun knocks on the door. But there is no response, Anu and Akun, it's me, a book Sigun. Still no response. Conterned, a book Sigun pushes the door open. The room is filled with fog, mist, and an area failing. As a book Sigun walks further into the room, a book Sigun says a symbol knelling and crying. When he looks up to say where he a consimbel is bowing, large with a humanoid flood reaches down to comfort a consimbel who he is simultaneously looking at.
a boxi gun. It's a swere like fire. A boxi gun exces himself and process the door. A kun simbel. Mlezikals a kun bi her name. Mi lord, forgive me. I did not believe mi sister. Shepleas. You are forgiven. There is a great war ahead. Satan and his armies are spreading death and destruction across the face of the earth. He will be stopped. We chose the two of you from birth to do the Lord's will. Mlezistates. Akutukanan nervously says, Ni Lord, this is we we have it as a gift. Are we chosen? Even. Mlezi kuts akutukanan of yes. There will come a time when your fight will be tested, Akutukananu. Because of your untertained no, you will fight adversity but put your fight in the most hig. It must not waver. Mlezi vanishes, and the mist dissipates. The two sisters dressed alike. In with a silk dresses with a golden belt wrapped around the waist and barefooted. The Rome the twins no Ochupi belongs to a high ranking commander. It is very spacious. The walls are bare, but the flood is covered in various animal skin. We did you doubt Anu. A Kunsimbel asks her sister. I do not know. I just a familiar voice speaks to Akutukananu in her mind. I told you, you are mine. Mind, body, and soul. The creature from Akutukananu storm vision reminds her of what it said to her as it cackles quietly and fades away. Akutukananu jumps up in fear as she looks around the room to see where the voice came from. Akunsimbel stands to her feet, eyes glowing a hot with a bluish hue. Akutukananu turns back to her sister to say her in war mode. What is it, Anu? Akunsimbel demands. I sense something evil around you. Akunsimbel sighs angrily. I do not know, Akun. It's the enemy. My betats what the holy one. Akunsimbel interjects. My be. You cannot lie to me, sister. For we are one and know each other modes and thoughts. I say it so me think that I cannot help you with. It is so me think only you can deal with. A Kunsimbel's eyes return to their original brown color. A little more related. She gently grabs her sister's hands. We can do this together even if I cannot directly help you. It will be better for you to help fig this enemy. She shows her sister a compassionate look. Thanks, sis, Akutukananu says. Te hug et other. Im skared akun. I cannot say this for Akun simbel. Locks her sister in her ears. Hey, that doesn't matter. Did you not hear or teacher? We are chosen. No matter the enemy, as long as God is with us, we will win. Who can stand against us if God is for us? No one. Always keep that in mind. Akutukanan nods in reply. Akunsimbel pulls away from their embrake. Now, let us meditate and pray, little sister. Akutukanan agrees. Yes. We shall pray and gather all strength. They both meditate and pray into the nigit. After three hours, a mist arises and sets on the twins. A surge of power charges rogue them, behold, I give you power over all the power of your enemies. Mlezi proclaims. But the power of God doesn't just fall on the twins, it touches everyone on the horse show. Alda sits on the deck, watching the ocean toss back and forth. A voice calls to Alda. He looks around in confusion and dismisses the sound. 
Te voite calsto alda again, but this time from te ocean. Alda. Alda gets up and squints his eyes. It appears to be a person. Walking on the sea. Taken abak, Alda is not sure of what he says. Alda. He hears the voite much closer as if Simeone is standing next to him. Uho are you? Alda yells back. Alda's name a choice within his ears. Alda grabs them both and yells back, Leave me alone. Mlezi is standing behind him. Alda is struck with amazement and fear as soon as he turns around. He drops to his knees in total shock at the presence of the ancient one, from thin lips a sword comes. To sever the truth from the lie and deliver the one most hig justite. Mlezi took a lump of coal. Lit with holy fear and tortured Alda's lips. The Spirit of God enters Alda's soul. He rejoices and praises God's name for it. Mlezi moves quickly to La Roge, who is walking the ship's house. Mlezi appears before La Roge suddenly, which nearly scares the man to death. La Roge jumps and runs for their life. As La Roge reaches the end of the hull leading to the ship's deck, Mlezi appears before La Roge again. La Roge halts in his tracks immediately. Mlezi touches La Roge's heart precisely as he comes to an abrupt stop which La Roge nearly falls forward trying to stop, but the touch quickly calms the man. La Roge, shocked at the holy being that stands before him, La Roge asks, Uho, what? Are you? Mlezi smiles, I am your brother in the Lord. Fear not. I come to deliver to you a word of power from on Hige. Shake the air to wherever you walk, out of the evil that encompasses it you will administer justice on the spot. And it shall not be lenient. Go. And do the bidding of the Lord. A surge of power enters La Roge's heart and spreads throughout his body. He gapes and falls to his knees in shock after realizing he was blessed with a gift from the onemost hig. La Roge begins to praise God for the blessing he retrieved. Mlezi leaves La Roge and Alda after. Speaking to each with words of power and encouragement, he searches for the last one, the telepath. Oldone is standing in the same spot on the ship that Allah discovered him on horse before, watching the moon and the waves of the oceans. He senses the presence of the Lord and instinctively knows which of the Trinity is upon him, Mlezi, what news do you bring from the King of Glory? Mlezi replies, your word has not changed, telepath, nor has your rebellion against the one most hig. Oldone hoofs and then snarks, me rebellion. Mlezi says sharply, wake your words we say, Oldone, for they will be your last. Oldone arrogantly asserts himself. He turns around quickly. Althog he stumbles at first from standing at the bow for three days. His tattered clothes blow in the wind. Lightning flashes across the midnight sea again, expressing Mlezi distaste for Oldone's rebellion. Me last Mlezi. Oldone shouts will fatigue Mlezi, the spirit of Grate. Mlezi is glowing dangerously. There is a wheat glow that accompanies and surrounds Mlezi. The spirit of Grate measures Oldone's words will awaken the intentions of his heart. The glory pulsates in rhythm with Oldone's heart beat. The standoff is cold, and it starts to rain. Oldone's heart beats loudly for the entire confrontation. His anger intensifies, and his heart rate in traces, as does the pulsation of the glory that covers Mlezi. My last words were to me daughter as you stood be and let the anakata slaughter her. 
I called for help from the King of Glory. Ligtening trapless across the ski. But what did he get, Mlezi? Nothing but slaug teret people anda. Murdered family. Enslavement is what he got as mi reward, Mlezi. Oldone ten belos. Miname is a shoga. Andi boto no one. Thunder flaps and rock the ship as tese words leave oldone slips. A bolt of lignin strikes a mast causing it to catch fire. The flame brings just a noble ligt to show both parties silhouettes in the dark. Ashoga presently called oldone sete sweet fury. Mlezi is covered in clothes surrounding its being, still measuring Oldones' words who heal the glory of the Lord is pulsating in cinch with Oldones' heart. Heavy breathing comes from Oldone. Since you have chosen rebellion, you are a crusade for their condemned to walk this mortal planet for only hundred years more. You are forbidden to die until these years are completed. And Mlezi vanishes. Tears fall from Oldones ears. Breathe to his heart, he cries out to God angrily, ah. I hate you. I hate you. A very honor of you. He falls to his knees in incurable grief. The sound of lightning and thunder can be heard and sent through goat the ship. Oldone falls as his fatty lies on the deck, grieving tremendously. For it has been over on a hundred years ago now. Ashoga, now known as Oldone, lost his family and tribe to the Anakata's war. He was once a powerful and prosperous king that has now been reduced to a bitter old man. During that time, Mlezi was sent to retreat Ashoga to fight for the army of Yahweh Sabaoth. Because he was a great king and a skilled man of war, Ashoga was arrogant. He told Mlezi then that he was Ashoga and bowed to no one. Sensing the arrogance in the king's heart, Mlezi cursed him on the spot, and calamity befell the rebellious king for disrespecting the spirit of Grate. Sabaoth wanted to end his life, as did the spirit of Grate, Mlezi. But Msheka showed the fallen king mercy as it was clear everything that the king held there would be destroyed in a blink of an eye. This world crushed the king's pride and grieved him for an eternity. Ashoga called out to the one most higu wile battling the Anakatas in the great war. But heaven world. Not answer, and Ashoga had to watch his dog tear and wife be rapid and slug tearred before his ears. It broke Ashoga to his soul. He would figured no more and never speak his name again for a hundred years. He became submissive to slavery and servitude, hoping it would end his life. But unfortunately, the curse that was decreed upon Ashoga was longevity. Curse to live for only a hundred additional years. Who sat there listening to Big Ma tell her story and saw her lean to ging in the water? Big Ma. She didn't hear him at first, so she continued, so cursed Big Ma. You have a something playing with your lean. You are about to lose it. Big Ma saw the lean as she yanked it and started railing it in. Child, it's a big one. Push began to help her. And before they knew it, the fish popped out of the water, it's a monster. Look at the size of that catfish. Shouted Kush. Big Ma said, yeah, it's a big one. They finally railed the fish into the hover draft, and it started flopping all. Over the hover draft. Put that big boy in one of those collars before it flops his boot back into the water. They sat there talking about the fish before heading back home. They inspected, gutted, and cleaned the fish. 
Big Ma Fried Upsome Potatoes Wile Kush Po Red Some of Big Ma's Favorite Home Made Hot Saute Into Some Sauters for Each of Them. Aste Ate, Push Side, It Know A Lot About Akila Malek, But Did Friedrich Have Any Recordings? Big Ma Side, Well, Akila Malek Was Very Popular With Us, And We Didn't Even Know About Him Until The People Of Arizona Tame. Here, butsure, we have a feo. She said to the eye, Billy, lie some thing from Friedrich Uhile we at. Billy said, sure. After a few seconds to die reflects on how a man or woman's word, vo, what, doesn't mean much in a world that says ling and breaking a vo or word as okay. It wasn't always that way, however. In ancient times, a man's word called be given as a bond in plate of money, land, or title to some thing of value, as a guarantee of payment for a debt owed. A man's word was compared to God's word in value, as men were the only creature capable of intelligent speech. A gift from the creator distinguished him from the animals he was given authority over. Because of the Sacredness of a man's word, which was more valuable to him than gold, men were taught not to give it their word casually. A man's word, given as a bond or oath, was an extension of him and side to it to his body, soul, and spirit. Everything he owned of value was bound to that word in value. And depending on the context and spirit in which he gave it, it was legally, morally, and so metimes spiritually binding. Legally, it was known as a verbal contract. Te so metimes brug te seto court before a magistrate. When a man said, I give you me word, it meant he was. Contracting a part of himself in plate of money or any other securities, and he could reclaim rigged to that word only if he settled the debt. The person he owed usually said, I release you from your what? It's how divorces were often settled. If he failed to keep his word, the verbal contractor owed either some part of his physical being as labor or his material possessions to pay the debt or obligation owed. Some times, those who were into the occult or witchcraft or some called dark magic, Wold give their word as an oath with their soul, tied to it as bond for some favor. This wold been them to evil spirits or worshippers of side spirits for lifetime or until the oath was taken back or broken. Blood oaths were disastrous, as this word of a man sailed in his blood meant he offered his future generations as backing for the bond of his word. Or it bound the people taking it in blood. So metimes it was done to bind men as blood brothers generationally. The bad oaths were the source of so-called generational curses that we hear about to die. Men gave their word as a bond against their offsprings freedom and lives, and as a result, they bound their descendants to the debt. If unpaid, it was said to be collected through misery and misfortune until the curse was lifted or the debt. Settled somehow. In the spiritual realm, if a man sore and what, Gave his word as bond or in promise or a vow to God or in God's name, he was held to that bond. If he broke it, it would affect his ability to prosper or be blessed if he did not make God his word. A person to whom he gave his word called go before God and hold his word as bond against his prosperity because he didn't honor the word contract. Some oaths were made indirectly but held to be binding be God. If a man took the life of an innocent person and spilled innocent blood, for instance, they considered it a debt owed to God and the earth and the man's future generations. The blood of your brother cries out to me for justice, 
God told Cain when he killed Abel, his brother, an indirect blood worth becoming a curse on Cain's future generations. Enslaved black people demanded reparations from witches who owed a blood debt to their generations. That debt has yet to be settled. Therefore, the scripture say, it is better never to make a vow than to make one and break it. Because eventually the debt comes due and will be collected, so metimes in blood when it was made in blood. Kush and Big Ma listened to Friedrich for a while before they went outside and sat on the porch drinking lemonade and listening to the nigged air. Kush was quiet for a bit when he asked, Big Ma, so what happened to the old one, a boxigun, and M. Big Ma looked at a boxigun saying, there were two hundred slaves on that ship. Mlezi appeared to them near Norfolk, Virginia, rigged before a sunrise with the guardian of guardians, Yael, and thirty one other still fatted beings, saying, Fair not, I am as you say, the ancient Mfarigi, yo my calm mlezi. We are here. Sent peace about, and these are your guardian angels to assist those headed north. Msheka has found favor in you, and you were called to do great work in him. The guardian of guardians and the celestial beings are here to do just that. The people located around in confusion. Mlezi continued, you being human, can only say the guardian of guardians and your guardian angel. If you only say the guardian of guardians, you will not go north but stay and do the will of Sabaoth as instructed. However, those who have not been chosen to continue with a book sigun are not less. Important. Your work must be done for a season, and then you all will meet again and then make your way to Georgia. Some will remain in Louisiana, but the rest will go to Arizona for a migiti battle for Sabaoth. All must dock at sunrise and learn your gifts when the time comes to return to the ship. The rest will venture off together, for your work is needed as a hero. Stay there until true enlightenment has been reached. Until that time comes, no you all are chosen warriors for Sabaoth. A book sigun and dung shall guide and lead you to the wise of Sabaoth. You all come from different walks of life but serve the same Sabaoth. These are the orders of the most hig. We have given each of you a charge to keep. The Abenians are destroying all life in their path and must be stopped. As you embark on this voyage to New York, you will collectively fight the hardships and overcome them, so prepare yourselves. Mlezi turns toward a boxigun, you have a separate task that will be revealed to you upon a rival. A particular assignment is destined for you. Stand with. Korage even when you have nothing. Go now and lie waste to the terms of the enemy. Bless the name of the Lord. Mlezi walks over to Akutukananu, gifts are given without repentance, but you do not know how to use them, but after you return to this ship, you shall know your gifts and how to use them at their full capacity. Mlezi held the wounds of Tose present as he said to them. Now, the rest shall be indignated and shown the way be your guardian. The guardian stood by their pupils and touched them as they praised about. A book sigun and dung trained them. Learned to work together as a team, and the rest went around preaching about grassy licked disciples in the book of Acts. Unaware of what happened in Arizona, these people boldly did as commanded. They could not even imagine what was about to happen. 
Lesi visited each of them to bestow the on a most hig power upon them, after six months, they selected for returned to the ship, and he called themselves the duty thirty. Now, how will we get to New York? La Roge asked. A book sigun locked at Oldone, yo spoke once before about how the men should be ashamed that a kid got them free, but how can you travel this ship all these years and not know how to steer it? Without humility, we cannot make it in this world. No, Sabaut is with us, so get the driving, steering, or whatever you call it, and get us to the city of Tripto. Oldone, still angry with Sabaut and Mlezi for his accursed state, but something about this young man made him understand that his way would only get him another. Hundred years as he said, he will steer the ship there. Given special privileges to direct this vessel many times before be the captain. So, it know how to operate it we will have to dock at Liberty Island and play our roles. Gata asks, are we just walking in Terre Frey? There is also the question of how will we have flying a ship without a captain. A verione locks around but none can figure out how to have flying the captain's absente. A young woman be the name de abres backs up. He can morp like a doom boot into humans only, where he can only morp into objects. The holy one who left gave me the gift and told me in due time that he will be needed for many vital missions. Oldone es de abre curiously. So be it alda size. It is set led, then, change the direction of this vessel and set sail for Liberty Island. Do we all agree? They all agreed. The new warriors force about sail to Liberty Island not without first finding bread, who had starved to death on the ship. The Abre ship shifted into Captain Jatai Muhen the ship docked after five days along the east coast. The horse show finally docks at Liberty Island. Alda, Aboxigun, the twins, La Roge, and the others are led in chain out of the ship with what appears to be Captain Jatai led in the group and Oldone walking next to him. Are we sure this is going to work, Oldone? The Abre nervously whispers as they walk past a large group of Anakatas guards and slavers. Oldone reaches into the abreast mind as she looks aimlessly around. The captain has lived here all his life, do not give us away, young one, with your suspicion. Yes, I am speaking to you to rogue your mind. Stop looking around. Ace forward and take the twist out of your rear, for God's sake. Strike ten up and walk like a man. The abrasiged, irritated, but she continued to the island's main entrance, where they met the sergeant general of the Anakatas, who allowed them entry to the island. They all walked with their heads held down as they. Entered the corridor instructed by Oldone. A man approaches, bit locks of things, you're not doing so well latterly. I guess you're losing your head, Captain Jatime. Being guided by Oldone, the Abre tells the man, not only am I losing me head, but this was also my last trip, and I guess I'll keep this for myself. Let me know if you know a Nyone who wants to buy me ship, and even my sons are not interested in this line of work. Smiling, the man said to the Abre, disguised as Captain the time, look like you got yourself a gold stock. She replied, yes, sir, he got a detent stock for me last time. Strong young books. And she'll bearing a gay fairs. His fate turns profound, saying, Oh, bitte why, you've been gone so long, you know you haven't heard the news, but many of the Abenians and computants have moved off world. 
There was so metroble in Arizona that events poke the Abenians. It just made be a good decision with so many of them of world. But don't let me keep you. It know you are a red now and just want to go home and get some error. The abres me led yes, he'll catch up on the news when he get home. The man's me led ten minutes on it. The abre repeated what the man. Side ten minutes on it. As they walked away, the man said, the rest that all fall, Thomas. The upper side of the top of her head, he left that fall in the isles of California chasing hoes. And he don't want to say that a surely another die of me life. Has he fed me out of the rest of me stock? The man lauged, he told you as before you left. Anyways, say ya. The abre waved and continued on her way. 